plasma rockets are fundamentally different than the conventional ones that we've been talking about, which are known as chemical rockets. Every launch is a reminder of how fragile our grasp on the stars still is. We burn, we break, we fall back down. But beyond the blue sky, there is no air, no ground, nothing to push against. In that vast stillness, motion itself must be reimagined. And in that silence, plasma rockets whisper of a different future. A future not built on explosions and fire, but on patience. On the steady breath of particles slipping away into the void. Quiet propulsion. A gentler path forward. The beginning of movement is shaped by the very stuff of stars. The old way, chemical rockets. For a hundred years, spaceflight has depended on chemical fire. The idea is simple. Pack fuel into a tank, ignite it, and ride the explosion upward. It is power born from destruction, a violent release of energy trapped in molecules. From the very first rockets of the mid-20th century to the massive vehicles of today, the principle has not changed. Different fuels, different boosters, but always the same method. Burn and push. On Earth, this approach works. Gravity holds us tight, and only fire strong enough to tear through the atmosphere can set us free. But the cost is immense. Tons of fuel are consumed in minutes. Each launch carries the weight of risk, of fire raining back if anything goes wrong. And when the fuel runs out, motion stops. It is brute force, not elegance. A method born from necessity, not imagination. Rockets built this way can take us to orbit, to the moon, even to Mars. Yet every journey is expensive, every attempt filled with limits. For all the progress, the system still feels ancient, as if we are dragging the past with us into the future. Something different is needed to go further. The problem of motion in the void. Movement on Earth feels easy. We walk by, pressing our feet against the ground. Cars move by, pushing their wheels against the road. Airplanes glide by, cutting through the sky. In every case, something solid or invisible pushes back. That resistance is what allows us to go forward. In space, none of that exists. There is no surface, no air, no water, only emptiness. If a ship drifts, it will keep drifting. If it stands still, it will remain still forever. To change direction, to speed up, or to slow down, something must be given away. That something is mass. Rockets spit out fragments of themselves, burning gases, particles of fuel, streams of fire. For every bit cast into the darkness, the ship recoils ever so slightly in the opposite direction. This is motion in the void, not against a road or sky, but against nothing at all. It feels unnatural, almost invisible, yet it works. And in that strange recoil lies both the limit and the possibility of how far we can truly go. What plasma really means. Plasma is not solid, not liquid, not gas. It is something beyond them. The fourth state of matter, the state of stars. In plasma, atoms are stripped of their electrons, leaving behind a sea of charged particles that shimmer with energy. It is the glow of lightning the light of the sun, the silent flicker inside a neon sign. For scientists, plasma is more than beauty. It is motion, heat, and power waiting to be shaped. When magnetic fields tangle and snap apart, as they do in solar flares, energy is released in sudden bursts. That same principle can be used to drive a rocket. Imagine streams of plasma, guided by invisible magnetic hands, thrown out into space at incredible speeds. Each particle leaving becomes a whisper of thrust, a tiny recoil that pushes the vessel forward. There is no thunderous explosion, no storm of smoke and fire. Only light, only heat, flowing into the dark. It feels almost alive, a rocket breathing particles into silence, each exhale carrying it further from Earth, not with violence, but with precision, not with waste, but with control. Plasma propulsion is the language of the stars, brought down to a machine. 
a way of traveling that mirrors the sun itself. The slow acceleration, the endless speed. At first, a plasma rocket seems weak. The push it gives is small, almost unnoticeable. A burst of chemical fuel can lift a ship with force, while plasma seems to whisper instead of roar. But its strength is hidden in time. Every second, particles slip away from the engine. Each one nudges the craft a little more. The change is slight, but it never stops. Minute after minute, hour after hour, the speed grows. There is no sudden leap, no violent surge, only a steady climb that builds into something immense. After days, the ship is faster than anything chemical fuel could allow. After weeks, it reaches hundreds of kilometers per second. The distance between planets begins to shrink. Journeys that once demanded mountains of fuel could be made with patience and light. It is a different kind of travel. Not a sprint, but a glide. Not a single act of force, but a constant breath. The silence of space accepts it, and the ship becomes part of that silence, carried forward on a river of its own making. In this way, plasma turns weakness into endless momentum. The limits. Why we still need chemical fire. Plasma engines are elegant in the vacuum, but they cannot lift us from Earth. The thrust is too small, too gentle. To escape gravity, we still rely on the old way. Massive boosters, violent burns, rivers of fuel consumed in minutes. Only that kind of raw force can break free from the atmosphere. This makes space travel a story of two stages. First, the heavy climb, carried on fire. Then, once the ship is free, the quiet hand of plasma takes over. One cannot yet replace the other. The new must lean on the old before it can prove its worth. It may feel like a compromise, but it is also a balance. Explosions do the hard work of leaving the ground. Plasma provides the patient push across the void. Together, they form a bridge between what we know and what we seek. For now, rockets will always rise in fire. But beyond the sky, they may glide on light. Progress rarely erases the past. More often, it stands on top of it, reaching further than before. The promise for the Moon and Mars. Plasma rockets may not lift us from the ground, but they can change how we move once we are free. Think of the Moon, only a short distance away in cosmic terms. A chemical rocket can reach it in days, but the cost is crushing. Every trip is an expensive gamble of weight and fuel. With plasma, the journey takes longer, but it becomes repeatable, affordable, and steady. A three-week trip for supplies may not sound fast, but it is reliable. It means food, tools, and building materials could flow like a slow river between worlds. Now imagine Mars, a place too far for comfort with our current methods. Every mission planned feels like a once-in-a-generation attempt. Plasma could turn that into something more natural, more routine. A constant acceleration, carrying heavy cargo across the gulf, makes Mars less of a dream and more of a reachable neighbor. It may not carry crews quickly yet, but it can carry what they need. Habitats, water, equipment, all sent ahead, waiting for them. In this way, Plasma propulsion does more than move ships. It builds bridges, not of stone or steel, but of time, patience, and trust between planets. The power behind the drive. Every engine needs a heart. For plasma propulsion, that heart is electricity. In near space, solar panels can provide it. The sun shines without pause, and its light can be turned into steady power. For short missions to the moon, that is enough. A few hundred kilowatts can keep the engines breathing plasma into the dark. But for longer journeys, sunlight fades. Past Mars, the panels grow weak, the light too thin. Something greater is required. That is where the dream of compact fusion begins. A small star, 
built and held inside a ship, feeding the engines endlessly. Fusion would not only sustain the plasma drive, but magnify it, giving thrust powerful enough to carry humans across vast distances. To hold such a sun within metal walls feels almost impossible, yet the work has already begun. Scientists bend magnetic fields, searching for the balance that will cage the fire of creation. If they succeed, plasma rockets will no longer be couriers of supplies alone. They will be vessels of human destiny, carrying us into places once thought unreachable. The human question. Speed and control. Machines may glide through silence, but people bring a different challenge. A ship can accelerate for weeks, but a crew must also stop. To reach a planet safely, the vessel must turn, firing plasma in reverse, slowing itself with the same patience it used to gain speed. It is a strange dance. Half the trip spent pushing forward, the other half spent pressing back. Control is just as vital. In the emptiness of space, steering is no longer a matter of air or water. Every shift of direction requires particles thrown the other way. Precision becomes survival. A small mistake at high velocity could send a ship past its target, lost to the dark. For astronauts, the experience would be unlike any past flight. No violent shaking, no deafening roar, only a quiet pressure a steady push against the body that never stops. Day after day, the sense of motion grows until speed itself feels infinite. The question is not only whether plasma can take us far, but whether we are ready to travel in this slower, more patient rhythm of the universe. The future of space may not roar with fire. It may hum with silence. Plasma rockets do not promise drama or spectacle. They promise something deeper, endurance, patience, and possibility. With each stream of charged particles, a path is drawn through the dark, steady, and unbroken. These ships may not leap like their ancestors, but they will not tire. They will move, always forward, carrying supplies, carrying hope, carrying us. Perhaps that is how humanity will spread among the planets not in sudden bursts of flame, but in a quiet rhythm, like the slow heartbeat of the stars themselves. Dar